All right. Are you ready for one shot, folks? Are you ready to dive back in to this very sad, very lonely little game? And, uh... It's interesting to me how many of my friends have commented that this is like one of their favorite games of all time. I'm moving this over here. I'm be looking at you more. Um, a number of my friends have commented on just how much they love this game. Um, <clears throat> and I can't help but wonder kind of how dark or hopeful this game is going to wind up being, you know? Um, I commented at the end of last stream that I was kind of having a hard time with the feeling of, like, oppressive darkness, loneliness, uh, entropy that I think comes through really strongly in this game. And I don't know if that's what I'm supposed to get out of it, you know, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know if the game has that kind of like as like the background but I'm just particularly oversensitive to it right now or something like that I don't know but we'll see I would expect because of the way that my friends love this game that there's something in it that's going to be cathartic um, and that maybe despite this oppressive feeling of of loneliness um, it ends with like this this hopeful note where like you and Nico together kind of save the world um, I'm not sure how much I feel like the game is quite going that way. If I'm not mistaken, there was an ending that the game had and then it was patched with a different ending. And I don't know if that's that there was like a, a there's a true ending that they've added or that too many people did something wrong and so they needed to be able to replay through the game to get the right ending. I don't know. I'm really not sure. That's something that I, I'm kind of peripherally aware happened. Um, but yeah. We have Nico here who is noticing that I have returned. I'm glad that I did not doom this child to eternal darkness and loneliness. Um, as uh, apparently happens in the earlier version of the game if you closed not in a bed this poor scared kid the faces are so expressive so I can say oh sorry I forgot to, I completely forgot to read out loud that Nico said Lauren are you still there and I can say I'm here it happened again everything just went really dark oh oh that kiddo so dark the light bulb doesn't even light it sound effects might be a tad loud yeah I can turn down that music not that much this is probably plenty um, which is honestly probably good for me to have slightly less of the oppressive overwhelming sadness of the music this is gonna ask me if I need a hint Still clueless. Good luck, Simon. I hope it goes well. I would like to get back to writing. Maybe, maybe I'll be able to write one of these days, folks. Maybe it'll happen. You never know. It could happen. Figures. Want another tip? No. Fine, keep at it. It's not like I'm going anywhere. So there's somebody on the other side of that computer or inside that computer who has a personality and is kind of sullen, sulky, like a, like a teenager. <laughs> a heavy piece of metal set into the wall. I think it might be a door or some kind of vault. There's a small screen here in the middle. Oh, that just looks like a lock to me, but I guess you could put something in that screen. That's right, there's a run button. I forgot there was a run button. Okay. You know what? 
I don't actually know if there are any consequences for asking for hints. The game has not made that clear, so since I already have an imperfect playthrough, I might as well see what happens. Sure, let's take another tip. There's a void beyond the four walls that bind our world to yours. The edges of your viewport where everything is obscured. So the four walls obviously are the uh, boundaries of the game. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Pass the film through the void and back again. Oh, you know I would not have figured that out on my own. I don't think. Button. Weird film. Not sure. I just see Locke and Sully's make out. Like, did that do it? I guess not. Well, I'll figure it out eventually. Okay. Well, that was worth trying, whatever. Okay, the music feels really loud here. Sorry. All right. How do I pull the film outside the borders? Like, I want to try to, like, make the... Wait, wait. Oh, oh. You have to pull the window outside of the screen. Six, three, zero, one, four. Could somebody write that down for me? Six, three, zero, one, four. Thank you. Yeah, there's some, okay, where did I have a code to enter? Let's see, oh, the screen is off. <clears throat> so the computer is just there to give you hints about the weird meta stuff. This does seem like this would be a fun game to uh, to bond with or bond over with somebody who uh, who who loves it. There was a place to put a code, and I don't remember what it was because it's unfortunately been two weeks. I'm sorry, I wouldn't. That would not be my ideal timing on things, but unfortunately, it is what it is. Th 
through here. Some kind of computer terminal. I love the idea of having to bolt things because people steal them, even in this other world. The clock face. Where was there something I couldn't do? I don't remember. And there's the creepy squares, which I have to not go too close to with my little kiddo. I cannot let harm come to this kiddo. To the best of my ability. <coughs> Which may not be very good, but... I helped my aunt figure out how to use her new cappuccino maker over Thanksgiving. It was fun. And then we drank. Then we drank cappuccinos. Hold on, my computer is a little bit sad. Let me switch modes just one second. Hopefully this won't mess anything up. We will have a new computer. We will have a new computer when I return to Texas. Are you excited? I'm sorry, Tough Stuff, but Tough Stuff's been... Tough Stuff's gonna go into retirement. We need to, we need to write Tough Stuff's story. Somebody had an idea. No, the new computer doesn't have a name, but we can come up with one if we want to. So have I stayed here already? Oh, we should get going now, Lauren. I suppose I have. Hi, Blue Glass. Also, Ampy, I don't remember if I said hi to you specifically, but hello. I've only got the one computer, which is plenty for me. Computers are expensive, and now I have to had to buy a new phone too. So I got a cheap phone, not a super cheap computer, but uh, we'll see. Nico, Nico seems like the sort of person who would name a computer. Don't worry, I promise I'll be a good guest. Alright, kiddo. Where was the thing I couldn't do? There was something I couldn't do. I don't remember where it was. Hello, sad child. We just dot dot. We have a dot 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 off. After which Nico says, okay. You just, you get the impression of kids whose parents can't spend any time with them because they're so busy, perhaps working. So they have these artificial toys to play with them. Don't you like to play run away from the killer robot? Well, at least I have fun with it. Pile of large books. Oh, that's right. Hide and seek. Ruthless mode. Give me exactly 14 seconds. What is poor kiddo? I, uh, I'm sorry. I know I've already read the dialogue out loud. Where was, I feel like there was something that I couldn't do yet. What was it? It's a sink. A small potted plant. I want to get dirt. I bet I could have gotten dirt from I bet I could have gotten dirt from the place with the sheeps. The sheepies. Oh, and apparently that victory theme, um, somebody actually reached out to Night Margin, I believe, directly and asked what the victory theme was and apparently it's just they, they made up, the, the composer just made up a victory theme, so it just sounds like a victory theme we might have heard before. But in fact, it's not. Where was there a thing? Oh, gosh. See, there's something really significant and important 
about her being planted because she's placed here in the center. I wonder if I'll eventually be able to go back to locations that I've already been to. That would be nice. I'd like to check on my friends, to be honest. I'd like to see how the bird kitties are doing. I don't want to go back, they say. All right, Nico. I'm not sure. Partly because I have a bad memory um, and partly because I'm so afraid of missing something, I, uh... I feel like I spend a lot of time just wandering around. I'm losing so much time. I'm not even losing it anymore. I hate this. Hmm. If it's been ripped out, how come there aren't any broken wires inside the empty slot? Well, I'm no engineer, but it's powered by some kind of magnetic technology. I know this much. Oh, Violet, yes, there you go. Yes, you're the one who asked. Okay, hold on. Button, question mark. The button fits snugly in the slot, but I'm not sure how to connect it. Hmm. All I know is that the button works by some kind of magnetic technology. Don't ask me how magnets work, though. I didn't even finish high school. Like, is there an area that I've been to but I've forgotten about? Going back to this coffee shop. That's not what I'm looking for, I don't think. I feel like it's gotta be in the direction of where the computer was. Stapler. It's bolted to the table. A tape dispenser. It's bolted to the table. Got the button equipped. This kid... Okay, this robot can't do anything about it. Some kind of computer terminal. <sighs> Sorry. Got the film, but now what? I don't know what to do. I feel like when I went up here, it just loops a whole bunch because Nico had things to say. We just walk all the way around in a circle. All the way around and around. Around and around and around. Is there anywhere else I can even get to? I don't think there is. What am I forgetting? What am I forgetting? Like telling me this is a timed segment. Well, I'll be in trouble if that's the case. Yeah, we'll go with chat hack. Can somebody give me a nice hint on something that I might be forgetting so that I know what I'm supposed to be doing here? Because I feel like I left off with an idea of what I was supposed to be doing, but now I have like no idea. <laughs> I feel like I've been everywhere. Yeah, that I can get to. So clearly there's something I've forgotten. There's somewhere I haven't been. But where? All right. 
they won't go back. No, it's okay. I just, I just don't know where I'm going. Where have I not been yet today? bad one shot player <laughs> because I can't I get I've gotten stuck too many times hello again Messiah do you need help yes explain again you need to find a way to get to the library on the surface can I just like walk backwards through no no I think I was I think I've been stuck before I guess I got stuck and just as I was about to give up and ask for help, I think I, uh... Door's locked from the inside. Yeah, see? I think last time I found it just... Oh! with me kiddo <laughs> don't worry we're gonna, we're gonna go we're gonna go far kid <sighs> I guess I was really tired last time all right let's go talk to a goat are you ready to talk to a goat are you ready are you ready bam 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 I wonder, like, are these people making sheep noises? Like, was Night Margin just like, all right, everybody, all of my friends, I need you to record your best sheep noise. And then one of them went, blur, and they were like, yes, leave that in. <laughs> That's my head cannon for the sheepies. Something has been chewing on this plant. Wait, it's a bird, kiddo. Oh, hello, bird kiddo. I have to look at all of your stuff before I talk to you. I'm sorry. Those are the rules. The remains of a potted plant. Oh, Nico's like personally offended about the fact that these plants have all been chomped on. How much is left of this plant? Yes, apparently my timing is to ask for a hint right before I solve it on my own. <laughs> Good job, Lauren. I don't know what that says about me. Okay. Funny and completely unrelated tangent is that I'll, I'll be like struggling with something on my own for like months and then I'll bring it up to my therapist and then I'll like have an epiphany like in the next week or two my therapist's like yeah see it hasn't it's not actually a crisis and I'm like no 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 it was bad it was bad for months it didn't just show up I just finally had given up hope on it getting better and decided to talk about it with you um I wonder if there's something about that psychologically. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'll ask her. <laughs> the entire plant was eaten. I just like it. There's like, just like the, the dot, dot, dot before this message. <laughs> just the despair about the state of the plants. So, okay. The sheepies are from the bird people land, but there's a bird person in the city which I mean I guess we don't know what non bird people look like right there's there were a lot of bird people around 
Are all the people in the second location bird people? Are all the people in this world bird people? Except for me, I'm a cat person. Person, person, bird person, person, person. Very clever there. Hopefully not birdly. <laughs> All right, let's talk to this kiddo, shall we? Oh, I gotta go look. Snoop at the books. Snoop. Oh. Snoop at the books. The title is City Life What to Expect. Okay, so they did move to the city. They'll probably tell us information about that. Let's see, what do these say? It's a landscape portrait of the Glen. Okay. A picture of a ram wearing a little pink bow. That sounds adorable. <laughs> Okay, so this is somebody from the Glen who's moved to the city. I just moved here from the Glen. Things are so different in the city. Okay, well, there we go. You've been to the Glen, right? Yeah. Everything's so green back there. I really miss it. My neighbor gave me some plants to cheer me up, but... <laughs> I should probably get a muzzle for Betsy there. A little sweat drop. Well, you know, you could always put them on a higher surface that the goat could maybe not get to. Okay, so the kid just repeats saying the same things. Okay. All right. It's such a gentle and pleasant bell sound. All right. Well, Betsy, you've done a good job eating everything. Nico, will you yell at me if I look at the bed? Lauren, someone lives here. We can't just sleep in their bed. Okay, good to talk to everything all right I'm sorry for my bad lack of directional strength folks <laughs> it's a Roomba it's a Roomba how many of you have Roombas <laughs> I'm not sure what this is it's like a little car I was about to say you have to ride on it, Nico. The thing is, Nico's the one who brought up that it was like car first. And I'm not making fun of them for it. This isn't, I'm not gonna give them a hard time. I hope they don't feel silly. But encourage them. You should ride on it. You should, you're a child, Nico. You should be allowed to do fun kid things. You should ride on it. Dot, dot, dot. What? Do it. Um, oh no. Oh, do you not want to? Oh my God. Oh, kiddo, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. I, I thought you're the one who said it was like a car. Oh, kiddo. The computer is off. If I were small enough to ride on a Roomba, I would ride on that Roomba. I would be really excited. I'm surprised the Roomba goes where I want it to go, though. I don't think Nico will like this. I'm sorry, Nico. I should probably deactivate that so I don't Well, that was fun. Was it? Was it fun, Nico? We ride at dawn. New. <laughs> that is the, that is the, uh, that's the, uh, 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 achievement. That's the word for it that we got. Good job. Oh, there's some plants. Maybe this person will be able to help me get some dirt. Nico had fun, but was self-conscious about it. A potted plant. This one's not been eaten. This must be the neighbor who gave the plants to um, that kiddo. A potted plant. This one has a pink flower on it. They like pink flowers. I think that's where I'm supposed to go. So I gotta go look at everything else. Alright, let's go in. Thing is, I also wanna... This is gonna be locked. That looks like a library. 
but it can't be. It's an office of some sort. Well, I don't want to accidentally ruin something, but I, I want to explore. A pile of large books. They look like phone books. Oh, you have phones, Nico. A photograph of the city skyline. A photograph of some buildings. There's a television head with a scarf. That's a little unsettling. A pile of large books. Some of the pages are dog-eared. A photograph of a factory. A pile of large books. <gasps> it's a fridge. It's a fridge. Just a trash can. It's a fridge. It's a fridge. See, now I know that if you progress the plot, sometimes you can't access things because I'm pretty sure that the safety violation, I could have gone and talked to that person if I hadn't talked to Silver first. So now I am a rebel. We have to look at every fridge. We're gonna look at this, look at this fridge. It has a light bulb on it and a strawberry and a goat, a sheepy. And I'm not sure what that blue one is on top. Is that the robot? I think that might be a robot face. This fridge has magnets on it. Maybe they'll come handy. I hope nobody will mind us taking them. Okay, that's what we're gonna use to fix things. Okay. I am a thief. The magnets, yeah, it's totally a robot face, a strawberry, a goat, and the light bulb. All right, let's go talk to this friend over here. Hold on. A photograph of some railings. I guess there's a lot of those here. Look, it could be worse. I could be... There are worse crimes. A photograph of the mines. There are many robots at work in this photo, extracting large deposits of ore. A photograph of the tower. The sunlight makes it hard to make out much in this photo. Just a trash can. Hey there. Hello. You the messiah? Mm-hmm. Dot, dot, dot. I like your scarf. Thank you. Mama made it for me. Tell her I like her needlework. I will. When I see her again. That's what Nico wants. Let's just see their mommy. Their mama. Okay, so this is where I came in. There's a coffee shop. A coffee machine. It's very warm. Coffee cups. I'm too young to drink coffee. But you just, you said you like milk and sugar, but not in coffee. Oh, I guess you, it means you don't put milk and sugar in coffee because you don't drink coffee, not because you drink your coffee black. Got it. A photograph of a house in the Glen. Looks like it was taken when people, people were still living in the ruins. It's a photograph of the cafe. Looks like it was a busy day. There used to be people here once upon a time. Okay, well, the magnets are apparently plot progression, but uh, it looks like I can unlatch this door. Why would I want to, though? What would that let me skip? I don't know. Let's go talk to this person, shall we? <gasps> that is so many plants. Oh, I hope you are a friend. I hope you can help me with the plant upstairs. Be sure not to touch these. Oh my god, is that a person with a plant on their face? Their face is a plant. These are plants that have only recently sprouted. It's not easy for a plant to make it out there these days. We got these growing lamps, but they're a poor substitute for the sun. The pots are labeled with different species names. Oh, the sprouts are stretching towards the sun. Same, same line of dialogue. Okay, same line of dialogue. You really are a potted plant with a bow on your neck. It's wheat. Why is it in a flower pot? That's a good question, Nico. Well, doesn't it look nice? I guess. I like to stand in the middle of a wheat field back in my village. 
It goes on for miles. Ah, I wish I could have seen it. In our world, wheat is usually only grown in small, isolated plots. Or in a flower pot. That's interesting. Oh, oh, I've seen these plants. Where have I seen these plants? Are these from around the, uh, the factory? That's a phosphor tree. I was right. Oh, like the ones we saw in the glen. Okay, well, I was wrong. I always wondered, where are the leaves? They're not dead, are they? Oh, that's a uh, face that that poor kiddo is making. Oh, not at all. Although these trees are composed of a woody tissue, they're closer to grass anatomy-wise. So the branches are actually leaves? Sorta. What's interesting about these plants is the amount of phosphor sap they can generate. Phosphor, that's the glowy stuff, right? Yep. Phosphor can store light energy and slowly emit it over time. Most of the phosphor from this world still contains energy from before the sun went out. Without the sun to recharge them, though, well, let's talk about something else. It's a cactus. 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 <laughs> I feel like that was a three-way conversation. I feel like we all spoke well together. Cactus. 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 <laughs> this tree has leaves. Ah, yes. True foliage is hard to come by nowadays. You hardly ever see trees like these in the wild anymore. And the ones you do see are pretty much all raised artificially by people like me, mostly for nostalgia purposes. A small tree with leaves. Apparently they're rare. So, is it a tree? Only a name. Empty flower pot. It's wheat. That golden color is quite something, no? Ah, black clovers. Probably the only plant hardy enough to survive naturally outside the glen. Personally, I think they're really boring to look at. One of my customers really loves them, though. This is probably a person that is going to be of some importance to the story. Just, just saying. I think all of the black clovers I'm growing here are for him, actually. This is the person who plays chess with, um, with Silver. Because Silver has those black clovers near her house, and the black clover is on the notebook. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be Silver's scientist? Question mark? Friend? I'm sure that I'm sure that he won't be significant to the plot at all. No, not at all. Come to think of it, I haven't seen him in a while. I wonder when is he coming to pick these up? The clover guy. He's actually pretty cool. He's an author, and apparently he's some sort of big deal. Or at least he's really passionate about his work. I don't know him that well, although sometimes I stumble across articles about him in the news. You gonna tell me his name, buddy? I'd love to chat with him if I run into him again. Totally not gonna be significant, not at all. A pink flower. It's a pink flower. <laughs> well, you got nothing to say about that? Plant, plant, plant friend. Hi, Q. Filled with plant clippings. A watering can, it's half full. It's a sink. A small garden trowel. The handle part is shaped like an owl? I get it. Tro an owl trowel? Is it an owl trowel? Please tell me it's an owl trowel. Did you see the look on that kid's face? I'm like, oh, it's an owl trowel. <laughs> That's really cute. That's adorable. Okay. I'm going to talk to... Planty McPlant face. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not really sorry. I'm a little sorry. <sighs> Hello there. You have a lot of plants. I do. Grew all of these myself, you see. Feel free to ask me about them. Oh, you're a gardener, right? Yup. Do you happen to have any dirt? Thank you, Nico. Otherwise, I was going to get frustrated that I couldn't ask about it. But this kid is smart. For growing plants, I mean. <laughs> I don't know, Nico. 
Yup. Do you need some? Yes. I'm supposed to plant this seed left behind by a plant lady. But the pot in the garden doesn't have any soil. I see. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Here, take this whole bag. Thanks. Can I take the owl trowel? <laughs> Wrong button. I might need the watering can next. Most of the plants in our world tend to glow and grow in the glen. Even if it's facing the flooding issues, it's still in better condition than the other two areas. The Barrens is, well, the Barrens. And Refuge City has barely enough ground to stand on, let alone grow stuff. On a larger scale than this, I mean. Good luck with that seed now. Okay, we're gonna go plant that seed. I suppose the other way is a shortcut, but I don't care about shortcuts. Oh, it's gonna become necessary once there's evil squares, probably. I bet there's gonna be evil squares. I'm gonna be really sad about that. It's gonna be all... <laughs> And Nico's gonna be all eek! And I'm gonna be all, oh no, jump scare! But I'm not actually bothered by jump scares. So. Let's go plant the seed. I hope we can go get some water. Alright. I've got some dirt! A bag of dirt for growing plants. I hope this helps you grow, little seed. The seed's in the soil, but it looks a bit dry. All right, Nico. I am prepared. You're gonna try to jump scare me game, maybe. The nothing is encroaching. But whatever, I'm gonna take care of this plant lady. Just you wait and see. I think this is the right way. All right, so far so good. So far the nothing does not seem to have spread. This is good news. I wanna, can I, a watering can, it's half full. Can I take the watering can? I want the watering can, Nico. Please take the watering can. <sighs> I guess that would be too much to hope that you can do two things. So we're going to go right back out there and go talk to the plant again. There's a watering can. Just ask if you can borrow it, Nico, and then bring it back. Come on. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The seed's in the soil, but it looks a bit dry. I just want to bring water. It's a watering can. It's half full. I could just borrow it for like two seconds. Come on. They're not going to let me do this, are they? I got to ask. Got to try one more time. Come on, come on. Let me let me borrow your watering can. Please. Good luck with that seed now. But I want to borrow your watering can. Why can't I borrow your watering can? Can I? I 
will connect the button with the magnets. The magnets don't stick to the aluminum, but... Oh, what if I just folded the magnets under this edge? Hmm, it's holding together, if just barely. I hope that's good enough. Magnetized question mark button. I'm gonna put some tape on it. Because why not? It's funny that's such an incredibly, like, hacked together, like, it's something that a kid would do, you know? Don't you agree? I'm gonna stick it together with... I'm gonna put scotch tape on my metal. <laughs> That'll work. Does anyone actually call it scotch tape anymore? Obviously that phrase just rolls right off my tongue. But... A tape dispenser. Oh, of course! I gotta tape it together or it might fall apart. Good thinking, Lauren. Taped button. <laughs> now it's in much better shape. I just feel like I heard it called scotch tape a lot when I was a kid and otherwise it's mostly just tape. And I feel like scotch tape is actually a brand rather than a type. And that might be part of the issue. Okay, so I have a taped button with no question marks. I'm trying all of my items on the vault and none of them are working. Alas. Alas. I think I'm not supposed to do that. Oh, is cellophane tape the right word? Or the, 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 the non-proper name, non-proper noun version, non-brand name version? It's a small tree. Now we know those are fairly rare. We have learned things about the world. Okay. So. I just don't want to leave the plant without water. I don't want to leave the plant without water. That's what I have to say about that. It's frog face time. I need to get a water bottle. Because apparently a watering can is too easy. I don't want to progress the story and miss my chance to water the plant and doom the rest of the world to failure. Nico won't go back to bed. I'm losing so much time. I'm not even timing it anymore. I hate this. Yeah, that's because that's because you had to wait a couple of weeks, dude. It's too much time. Well, I guess I'm going to have no choice but to progress the plot because apparently Nico doesn't think that a watering can is the solution to water a dry plant. Can I have a coffee pot? Can I use a coffee pot? That would be great. Okay, so Nico likes milk and sugar, but does not like coffee. All right. <sighs> I want to ask to confirm that I'm not missing anything before I move forward. Part of me feels like that's cheating. But like, otherwise I'm just gonna run around in uncertainty and, and be hesitant. Because I've solved the problem. Nico is definitely not a cat. Definitely not a cat. All right. 
Is there anything here that I'm missing? Or shall I go ahead and progress the plot with my button that I just made very scientifically? With my technological sophistication. Uh, everyone, stretch your arms over your head while you... Her... Up to the ceiling! Up, 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 up! No way to the side! Oh, to the other side! Okay. The opinion that I've gotten is that I'm not missing anything here. Okay, sweet. Maybe we'll get some water for the seed later. Okay. Taped button, it's time. Let's hope this works. <laughs> I didn't actually expect that. Oh man. Reactivating elevator services. Did you see those squares? They went away, so apparently they can show up and then go away. Through the power of believing in our incredibly creative button. Please input security code to continue. What? That's never happened before. The squares? Huh? You saw them, right? They were on the door and... Oh, nah, the square stuff happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, Biggie. I meant the whole security code thing. But then again, the elevator hasn't been this broken before. Hmm. I guess we should go look for a code, Lauren. Well. We've already got it. It needs a code. 63014 Nico that's the code please input security code to continue 63104 oh, see if I remember that correctly I did not access denied 63014 oh, okay What? It works. I don't know what you did, but it actually works. <laughs> Good job, kid. <laughs> You're a genius, you know that? Well, I had help from Lauren, too. Oh, right. <laughs> Just a supernatural being beyond the scope of mortal comprehension. No big deal. <laughs> <sighs> so does that number not change between playthroughs? The whole messiah business. Anyway, ready to go? I'll be up ahead. Do I go down there? I want to make sure the plant is in good shape. Thanks, Deep Shock. Well, I just, I wasn't sure if there was some sort of a randomization between the codes. Guess we are going the long way around every time. Maybe I'll take the shortcut next time. Oh, I want your watering can, friend. I promise we'll give it back. There's even a shortcut in case the squares show up, but I guess that's not gonna happen. Okay, fine. <sighs> it's a sink. It's a sink. It's a trash can. I guess I can't do anything else. Hey there. Hello. You the messiah? Mm-hmm. I like- oh, that's right, we did the scarf conversation already. Is needlework actually what you would say to describe somebody's knitting? Because I'm used to needlework being what's used to describe, like, stitching. Cross-stitching, embroidery, things like that. Even just sewing things together. 
But I guess you do use knitting needles. So... I guess technically it is needlework. I guess? Alright. One last time. Shall I go down the elevator, folks? Nico's scarf is crocheted, but you'd still need needles for that, right? Alright. We will be back up, though, because there's that whole vault thing. Unless I'm not cool enough to open the vault in this playthrough, in which case, cry. Crochet hooks? Oh! Well, presumably it's not crocheted then, because then it wouldn't be needlework. It would be hook work. Alright, folks. Are you ready to descend? That makes me think of the Disco Cactus cover of the Fall Guys song which has a lot of words we sang that um, they had the whole choir of us singing with them at MAGFest this year there were a lot of words I did not get them right <coughs> I mean it could be a scarf that's entirely embroidered oh hey welcome back that sure took you a while huh because <laughs> I didn't go immediately. I did actually wander around a bit, didn't I? I love that he has flags for this. Oh, shoot. You've been waiting this whole time? And holding the door open? Well, I uh, didn't want to be rude. I'm sorry. I should have told you to go on ahead. Eh, don't worry about it. Oh, do you have, like, little glovies? Oh my god. It's elevator music. It's interesting to, to me, the use of the, is that a vibraphone? It sounds like a vibraphone. Not a marimba, I think. Um, but it's a very hollow sound that kind of reinforces the loneliness of the, of the, well, the everything in this game. It's a very simple song. Um, but that's that's one of the most used sounds in this game soundtrack, and I think it's I think it suits it very well. All right, dot dot dot, dot dot dot, dot dot dot, dot dot dot. Sure is taking a while. Mhm. Mm Oh, goodness gracious, I'm stuck in an elevator with the messiah and also literally God themselves. This is awkward. <laughs> Please don't talk about spoilers or things about the structure of one shot. We'll get there when we get there. But in the meantime, I don't know anything about where this game is going, and I'd like to keep it that way, if you don't mind. Well, maybe we can chat to pass the time, then. You heard me? <laughs> oh my god, Nico can hear people's thoughts. I thought it was just me. 
I thought it was just me because I, I can read all of the dialogue, including the internal dialogue, because I'm the player, aka God. <laughs> Apparently. I mean, sure. Alright, Lauren, should I? I'm gonna ask all the questions I can get away with asking. Let's ask about his job. So, what do you do at your job? You seem really busy. I, uh, I fix lights mostly. But now I also deliver and refill high energy phosphor to structures that need them. High energy? You know, the super concentrated glowy stuff they had to process in factories. It's what powers most of the city stuff. We used to have a small army of delivery robots doing that. But lately, a bunch of them have been breaking down? Question mark. So until they fix them, I'll just have more work on my plate. I haven't slept in so long. Oh, no wonder you look frazzled. This individual and burger pants, man. <laughs> I feel like they would, uh... I feel like they could complain about how hard work is together. When will the robots get fixed? I have no idea. It's all up to the scientists over at the labs. They seem really concerned about something else lately. Oh? Never a good sign when even the smart folks are worried. All right, Lauren, should I ask about the city? This city is very big. It's smaller than it looks. Getting pretty crowded, too. First there was the refugees from the Barrens, and now more Glen folks are moving in, too. Oh? It's just safer here, you know? I mean, it's not a haven by any means. That square stuff we just saw? We get more of that here than anywhere else, apparently. I noticed. We're lucky it only seems to affect the city's infrastructure. The landmass itself is still holding up. Which is good, since there isn't much solid land here in the first place. Let's ask about the library. Can you tell me about the library? I'm supposed to go there. <laughs> just this child's so well-mannered and good-natured and just, I'm supposed to go to the library. Can you tell me about the library? It's just, it's adorable. <clears throat> Oh yeah, that's one of my main delivery spots. Those reading lights are pretty high maintenance. But I always feel out of place surrounded by smart people. Yeah, the way you talked about the scientists, kiddo, as, as though they're smart people and you're not smart people, you, you sound, sound like you've kind of got some insecurity there. <clears throat> well, I guess you're pretty smart yourself, so you'll fit in fine, you and Lauren. All right, well, I got all the lore. I think you only get to ask three questions. Anyway, it was nice meeting you. Uh, Nico. Right. See you around, kid. Gotta run now. He seems in a hurry. I guess we should hurry too, Lauren. People are counting on us. Mm-hmm. Let's go find that library. Charging up to the library. I'm sorry. This is just this kiddo has that kind of personality. Oh, it's a robot. Beep boop. I had a phone that would say beep boop whenever you turned it on. <laughs> I programmed it, or rather, I told it to say that <laughs> because that's how I roll, <laughs> for better or for worse. Beep boop. God, they beep boop at the robot. See, this person has a face for a face. This is, I feel like this is the same song we were listening to earlier, but it has another instrument in it. Sigh. You all right? Ah, oh, the Messiah, perhaps, this is a sign. Tell me, do you think you can fix the world with the sun? Honestly, I don't know. I've been getting mixed messages. I know. 
But what do you think? I think... I think I should listen to Lauren. No, kiddo. Kiddo, you're allowed to have opinions of your own, but you're also a child and this responsibility shouldn't be on your shoulders. After all, Lauren helped me get this far. I will take your faith for an answer then. What do you mean by that? It means whatever you think it means. You're weird. Okay, anyway, sorry to repeat the conversation. So there's the elevator, which presumably I'll go up. Yeah, the lighting is really unsettling. Like, that shade of pink is not the color that lights are supposed to be, you know? A street lamp. A street lamp. Street lamp. Street lamp. Sorry. Sorry. I don't know why I am the way I am. I won't actually read the street lamp line out loud for every single street lamp. You just see, like, Toby Fox. Being like, yeah, but if you reward them for it, they'll talk to all of them. <clears throat> and I'm like, that's right. Okay, the arrows are telling me to go that way, which means that I need to not go that way. You know how it is. Oh! Oh, 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 is that like a newspaper sales, a newspaper boy, but a robot? Oh my gosh. Evening news. Evening news. It is, in fact, a newspaper well, newspaper bot. <laughs> Instead of the paper boy, it's the paper bot. Are you here to purchase a coffee? No. Newspapers are for grown-ups. <laughs> I love that the dialogue never forgets that Nico is a child. Grown-ups. Yeah. What does that mean? It means people who aren't kids. Kids? Er, aren't you a kid? I am a robot. Right. Oh my god. Amazing. Okay, well, we gotta go as far as we possibly can from where we're supposed to be going. It's locked from the inside. Okay, fine game, fine. This really reinforces how dark it is that there's like sort of glowy water, but. It's way brighter where my son is. Oh, hello, robot. <laughs> hello, person. <laughs> the library is up ahead. No, I accidentally went to the right place. Thanks. Well, well, that won't do. That will not do. That's what happened last time! I accidentally went to plot progression in the Glen. And I don't think I was this far in the game last time. So, like when I played this. So this can't even be latent memories. I'm in an alleyway. Why was an arrow pointing into the alleyway? It's a trash bin. It's a trash bin. <gasps> Did you see that? That looked like a cat creature of some sort with glowing eyes watching. It felt kind of ominous. Nico says dot dot dot. Lauren, did you see what happened? Yeah. My vision went blank for a second. And then I saw something. Like a really short dream. I wonder what that was about. A bag full of trash. Gross. It's a trash bin. It's a trash bin. This is this gonna be the seedy underbelly of the city? Music sounds really ominous and scary. It's a lot of trash bins. 
It's a faded flyer. It's a faded flyer. Do you see? Do you see the sheepy? Somebody graffiti the sheepy. It's a graffiti sheepy. A sheepy graffiti. <laughs> graffiti? <laughs> I'm gonna stop. Sheep feedy. A curious marking on the wall. That is not how you would say that, Nico. You're quoting something. It looks like a ram? Sheepy time. Alright, well, let's go deeper into the dark people aren't going to be doing so well out here away from even the phosphor they could probably use the, li the light of the sun actually oh my goodness oh it's a big book the title says understanding robots some empty glass jars an empty glass jar with a wire handle The blanket has quite a few patches. A rusty metal garbage can. There's some broken glass in here. What are you trying to make? Or is it these lanterns? Are these lanterns? Are you making lanterns? Empty coffee cups. There's some big plastic discs in here. Looks like they're supposed to go in something. Wait, Lauren, are we really going to take these with us? But they look so heavy. Oh, look at that poor sad kid. All right. Hey, they're actually pretty light. Oh, good. Big books. Ah, oh, these are dictionaries. Some of these words are underlined. Most of the words are underlined. Lantern plant. L a, a plantern? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just really like stupid poor mantos. It's like one of my favorite things. <laughs> you might have noticed. There's a note attached. It says, thank you for working so hard, Mr. Lamplighter. A framed photo of someone. A jar full of red glowing fluid. An empty glass jar. The handle on this one looks broken. Okay, so these are, these are lanterns. And then lanterns have broken. A big book. The title says Understanding Robots. Is this my friend's home? Is this my elevator friend's home? Because he did say he does lamp lighting, right? He does he does a bunch of things, but that's one of the things. Because the robots used to do it, now he does it. And the, the dictionaries, the, the, the idea that he's working hard, he's trying to understand robots so that he can help fix the robots. He's trying to learn more by, by studying the dictionaries, improving his vocabulary. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go with that for now. What did I get from? Convex lens, a large lens curved outward. Thin lens, a delicately thin lens. Thick lens, a large thick lens. <clears throat> Wait, hold on. If my. Oops. Actually, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do it. We can do it this way. An easier way of doing that. Check it out. Okay, no. This is June. I'm afraid I'll make it brief. I've left you a journal, part of which is written in a language that's something. Something. Read it, and you will know what to do. 
Okay, I thought maybe there would be more <clears throat> in this document. But it does not appear that there is, even though I looked at another Clover journal. But you can see why I might think that would be a Clover journal, right? All right. So that means that, that oh. I'm gonna help you in a minute. I'm just gonna check things out first. And... Whoa, that is the right reaction, Nico. That is a tree. How is that a tree? How is there a tree here? Lauren, did you see that fox just now? It just ran behind the tree. That's totally the creature that I saw earlier. It was a fox, not a cat. Well, foxes are basically cats. The fox says dot dot dot. I'm sorry if you were looking for me, but I cannot talk to you. Not now. Um, dot dot dot. But can you promise me something? Huh? If you can find a way to return, please do. Uh, what do you mean by that? No reply. There's no one here. Okay, so I'm supposed to come back here at a different point in the game. Alright. Noted, game. Please do not approach... I thought maybe using the light bulb would help, but it I don't know what I can do about that. I'm gonna try to figure out what I can do to help you, okay? Mostly it just affects. I mean, I guess they've tried to make the point that the robots aren't people unless they've been tamed. A surreal I'm sorry but there's something incredibly Studio Ghibli about this I'm in the like the the, the weird surreal otherworldly city and here is one person selling snacks with a coffee mug for a head and here's another person selling snacks with a toaster for a head amazing hey kid want some soup dumplings they're guaranteed to contain only a minimal amount of industrial byproducts wonderful well it's good to know that like <laughs> it's good to know that factory the industry is 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 booming as it should be as it is in the real world too yay Pass. Soup dumplings are delicious, though. Strongly would recommend if you've never tried them. Just be careful you don't burn your mouth on them. <laughs> People disappearing behind trees in bizarre rooms and metafictional games featuring a focus on the player. Yeah, that's at least two games that do it, so it's interesting. This smells kind of nice. What is it? breaded fish. I toasted the bread myself with my face. That is a toaster. <laughs> what would my face be if I were one of the object head people? What would my face be? Do the people's heads change based on their personality and occupation or do they pick their occupation in part based on their heads? This is a very, very good question, Blue Glass. Would flute work? I feel like it's the wrong shape. I guess it's just if it's just the head joint. I see. <laughs> Nico's like, it's really weird that you stuck the bread into your face. Okay, wait. What is an aptonym? You're gonna have to 
explain that to me. That is... Oh! I suppose this is probably where I'm going to need the lenses. This looks like a camera. There's a slot here. Looks like paper or something might come out from it. It's an empty rectangular slot. Looks like something could fit in here. Didn't do anything. When someone's name is fitting for what they do. Oh, that's wonderful. That is wonderful. I'm glad we have a word for that. Like a baker whose last name is Sweet. Okay, well, we'll take a photo of something with this, I'm sure. Are you here for your photos? Yes. No? Alrighty then. I'll just, uh, stand here. Oh, some of them have face faces. This stand smells a bit like burnt sugar. Delicious. Yep, still getting the hang of making these fried candy skewers. They don't taste too bad, though. You Do you want one? It's okay, thank you. Oh my god, what a polite child. What a polite child. Oh. Is your face a water bottle or a trash can? Or a pill bottle. I think it's a pill bottle and that's a pill. This is unsettling. Hey, hey, ready for me to blow your mind? No. Oh, but... Actually, I do want to hear about it. Curiosity killed the cat, eh? I'm not a cat. I'm sorry. It just has to be read in that tone of voice. Okay, so I've invented a medicine to prepare everyone for the upcoming water shortage. All you got to do is dissolve one of these pills in water. And then you drink the water. And then you never need to drink water again. What? It also makes plants grow faster. How does it work? Here, why don't you take a free sample? Oh, thanks. Don't thank me. Go spread the word. Actually, I exaggerated. The effects of the pill wears off in like a week. But all you have to do is just take another pill. Okay, the water pill. Goes in water, supposedly. All right. I need to get a picture taken. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I'm gonna do something. Oh, hello, yes, you're totally the lamplighter. Oh, that was your house, wasn't it? I'm sorry I took your lenses. Oh, hey there. You, uh, doing okay? Yep. What are you doing? Just filling this lamp here. It's taking a while. I think it might be leaking. He looks busy. You can tell, huh? Oh. He's really adorable. So this goes to his room. Somebody gave him a letter and he treasures that letter. warm in this room. Are you gonna go curl up with the other kitties, Nico? <clears throat> Hello, giant heater face. Oh my gosh. That's a kitty purr. That is a kitty noise. Oh, a cat. 
Are you lost? Me? Do you wish to join us? Join your cats? Yes. But I'm not a cat. I don't walk on four legs like they do. You have cat eyes. My eyes are normal people eyes. Well, normal back home. Your hat is shaped like a cat. But I'm just a person. You are still welcome here. I protect lost people as well. Thanks, but I'm not lost though. I've got Lauren to guide me. I see. It's warm here. Yeah, this was my original purpose. Watching cats? Warm. Oh. It's a nice purpose. Oh. oh, you look tired. Do you wish to rest? I can't sleep now. Lauren and I got stuff to do. I see. So where did you find all your cats? They found me on their own. So I stay here now. Ah. Oh. Well, it's good that you're not alone, at least. I met some robots in the other areas, stationed all by themselves. I felt kind of bad. With robots, it is all right. We are not like people. We are typically unable to feel loneliness. Typically, though? Right. Well, you talk less like a robot than most other robots I've met. Maybe. Not many people frequent this part of the alley, but there are a few. One of them even lives here. I see. You have been here for a while. Are you sure you do not wish to stay? I'm good. Thanks for offering, though. So polite. Such a polite kid. Okay. Alright, that's the end of my... Oh. That is really cute. Nico is just so sweet and gentle. And this happy little robot with a bunch of kitties I think I think that they are relatively content with their situation and I bet they're a good neighbor to Mr. Lamplighter who I like a lot Mr. Lamplighter is very cute so that's why there's arrows pointing that way. So I need to get back to that tree at some later point in the game. All right, so I'm gonna go through here one more time just to see that I've done everything there is to do there. And then I'm gonna try to go up to put the water in the plant bucket. Words, they're hard. Right, there's Mr. Lamplighter. The robot's name is Kelvin. I mean, that would make sense. Where does this one take me? What is this? Oh, this is where scientists are. The luminescence index of liquid red phosphor decreased by a factor of 3.57 this past week. So all of the phosphor everywhere became less bright. Alarming to say the least, that's the sharpest decline I've seen and the number is only increasing. We will have to further concentrate the phosphor now for it to be of any use. It's hard to believe, but there's a good chance this city could run out of light in as little as six months. What are we going to do? If the city runs out of light, well, I don't want to think about what happens then. Yeah, no, the white coat does tell you. A bunch of words are on the screen. I don't understand any of it. Ah. Hello, robot! In order to gain further access to the labs, you must pass the security system test. The... huh? 
You must change the color of the lights into a specific configuration. Allow me. This seems familiar. I think I did this section of the game last time. I must have gotten further than I thought. I don't remember what happens here and I don't remember the solution, but this seems familiar. It may help you to go one color at a time. Signed, management. It's a big metal box with lots of machinery inside. This one has a robot in it. Is that robot goes spinny? Beep boop. This is the printer room where machine parts are made. Also robots. <laughs> Why do I remember this more than I remember the other parts of the game? It can also help to write down previous attempts. Management. Thanks, management. <laughs> Management's having trouble. I'm gonna have to brute force. I'm gonna have to brute force this problem, aren't I? Oh man, amazing. Okay. Maybe that's why. Maybe because it's so exciting to have to brute force something to solve it. If all else fails, wait for the puzzle to reset. Maybe you'll get an easier one next time. All right, I'm gonna go see if I can bring the water pill up to the surface before I do this. Probably should go to the library, but I kind of want to do everything else first. Because that's how I roll. For <laughs> better or for worse. Yeah, see, like, none of this seems familiar at all. I don't remember Toaster McFace. I don't remember the lantern lighter. I, like, don't remember anything. But as soon as I walked into that factory thing... Oh, fast travel exists! Travel. Elevator Street. Oh, it's just gonna be just me and Nico. Mm-hmm. Oh, It's okay, Nico. We could have a conversation. I wouldn't mind. I am on a mission to help this plant lady. This is presumably why they did this actually is to save time as opposed to um actually don't know if it saves much time to put it in some water. I'm trying to think through this. Nico. Nico, I don't know what to do here. Oh, it might help if I actually open the door. There's a sink. Maybe I can put this in the pot and then Nico will be like, I need to bring some water. I wonder where I can get some water and I'll be like, in the watering can, that's half full. There's a water shortage. So if we don't get to get that, it would be because Nico is like, we don't want to take that. That's someone else's water. They're going to need it for all their other plants, which is a very Nico thing. I'm going to take care of this plant. Ms. Plant Lady, I'm gonna help. Very determined. 
I don't remember if past Lauren did this, but put the put the, put the, put the I don't know what to do. So we get a groove to that music a little bit. All right. Beep boop beep boop beep boop beep boop beep boop 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 boop. I got nothing, man. I got nothing. Okay. Do I go to the library and progress the plot? Or... Oh. Do I go mess around in the factory? See if they'll give me water. <laughs> they just want water! That's all I need is water. It's gonna be the library, isn't it? Yeah, this is the library. Hello. When the world ends, would it be better if it was gone in an instant or slowly fading away? <laughs> it goes like, uh... To be honest, I'd rather the former. That's a quick death promises the least pain, don't you agree? Dot dot dot. Miko is like, um I am a I'm a baby child. I am too young to be talking about death. of progressing the plot and locking things off because I'm pretty sure that I've done that a couple of times. Alright. Wait, wait, wait. Fast travel. Factory. Are you ready to brute force? particularly good at mastermind I don't think I've played it in 30 something years That was green, right? Oh, okay. 
One light, correct. Okay, so I'm gonna turn these ones from blue. Okay, so at least one of these was blue. Clearly, I am not understanding this. Okay, so this one is blue. Okay, so that one's supposed to be blue. What was that one? Was this one also blue? Because it changes to different puzzles every time, right? <sighs> this is the brute force puzzle. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so there's two blues. This one is blue. Wait, so that was that one was correct. Right? Oh, jeez. take a while I don't want to I, I don't want to subject you all to my brute forcing but I do want to go through and maybe this is optional um I need something to write down on and something to write with give me a minute okay we'll listen to this music or we can put on different music if you want Reread the hint notes over on the right. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. I admit I kind of wasn't taking it super seriously because I was like, I'm probably supposed to do this a different way. All right. Hints. Go one color at a time. Write down previous attempts. Oh, so fill them all up so you know how many of each color. Okay, that's a good idea. That's a good idea, game. If all else fails, wait for the puzzle to reset. I love that management is like, yeah, you're gonna have to brute force for your way through this because we didn't think through this. Okay, so no yellows. Wait. I 
did that wrong. So I wasted a turn, so we're gonna start over. Okay, we're gonna try this again. Two yellows this time around, okay. So we're gonna do two yellows. Let's see if this works better. Okay. Two blues. We have blues in the chat, in fact. Zero greens. One pink. Okay. <clears throat> so we have two blue, two yellows, two blues, and a pink. Okay. It's really more of an orange, but. try so it was scratch through that and then we're gonna do blue yellow pink blue yellow how many did it say were right with the last one I don't remember this one, three lights, correct. There's probably a mathy way of doing this, but. So that means that I'm going to try to make this blue and this one yellow. One light's correct. Okay, we're going to try this. Blue, blue, pink, yellow, yellow. One correct. I like logic puzzles, but I don't know that... <clears throat> well, I wonder how well past Lauren did on this. <coughs> <coughs> the brute force slash logic puzzle. Okay. What do we got here? Um... Now I'm trying to think through this. I suspect the pink is not actually correct. You know what? I think, I think looking at this, it looks like this one is probably yellow. Um. 
then I'm guessing that this one is probably blue. So I'm, I'm, I'm logicking my way through this. Let's try, there's a couple of permutations that we could do here. I'm going to try to put it pink, yellow, blue, blue, yellow. Let's see how that does. Pink, yellow, pink, yes, pink yellow, blue, blue, yellow. Two, correct. I think, though, again, I was pretty sure about this yellow. We're going to go ahead and just make an assumption here. try this. Okay, then well we're going to try blue, yellow, yellow, blue, pink. actually followed the instructions <laughs> they were good suggestions I should have taken them from the beginning but I didn't <laughs> whose fault could that be there's my beautiful chicken scratch five lights correct access granted yeah <laughs> Security system has been temporarily deactivated. Would you like to reset it? I, I don't think I want to go through that again. <laughs> yes, it was a receipt. That's the paper that I had hanging around. That's not good. I can understand why your sweat drops scientist friend my robot what happened I don't know I left for a minute and what am I gonna do please do not approach it's clear that Nico feels bad about these robots that are in this situation oh there's a whole lot of scientists wow Monitoring, 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 monitoring. There sure are a lot of computers here, and they look important too. I want to press all of the buttons, but I must resist. <laughs> relatable, Nico, relatable. Ugh, those square particles just took out two of my robots in the Glen. It's going after the robots, specifically. We might have to put off the water analysis project for now. It's interesting. The Baron's engineer just reported another sighting of the particles in the cliff area. That is silver. Well, nothing unusual at this point. Picking up some more disruptions in Sector 8 of the city. This is consistent with our earlier findings. Not good at all. So I gotta talk to everybody just in case there's another thing that they say. I love how they're just like generically doing science. Do you have a can of Coke on your head? Are you, are you a carbonated beverage, sir? 
Hmm, I wonder what the author would do in this situation. Oh, that, yeah, that is Silver's friend. I'm pretty sure that that has been confirmed in dialogue. Dr. Silverpoint usually references his works. Dr. Silverpoint. What is the quote edition request, Woofer? None of us have been sleeping very well in light of recent events. The square particles took out a few of my robots last week, and... Thought, thought, thought. She fell asleep. She's still asleep. Coffee is not actually a replacement for sleep, folks. I can barely keep my eyes open, man. How does Dr. Silverpoint get all that energy? There's like all these little critters. It's a shelf full of little machine parts and tools I don't recognize. It's a bookshelf. A coffee machine. It's almost empty. A warm pot of coffee. Okay, the same dialogue about the shelves. I think that the I think that the quoting the adding quotes changed, but I don't remember what. That looks like Dr. Silverpoint. Nope. That wait, who is wait? There's a sparkly on that shelf. Hello? Oh shoot! Oh, you look familiar. If I had known you would be here so soon, I would have turned off the system. Hello there. Oh, you're adorable. I feel like I've seen you before. Sorry about the weird security measures. <laughs> That's an expressive face. It's okay. Lauren helped me solve it. I did <laughs> on a shopping receipt. <laughs> like a true professional deity. Did they now? So, can I help you with anything? Yeah, where's the library? The library? That's all the way on the other side of town. The fastest route is where you take the shortcut through the back alley, but I think that's how we got here, actually. Oh, good. You should head back that direction and walk to the east a bit. You'll find it eventually. Thank you. Something is poking out from the shelf. It's a tube of glitter glue. Oh my god, why do the scientists have glitter glue? You can have that if you want. Never know when you need to glitter things up, right? She winks at the camera. Oh, are you sure? Yeah, I have tons of those. <laughs> She's the glitter scientist. Thank you. It's a bookshelf. Okay. So, You've been walking all over the world, huh? Mm-hmm. Jeez, I can't imagine. Do you get really tired sometimes? Kinda. But I don't mind. It's actually really pretty. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. Even with the sun gone, the world is still a beautiful place. <sighs> what did the world look like with the sun? Oh, uh... You know, it's kind of embarrassing to admit how little of it I've actually seen. Oh, ironic, isn't it? Even though I'm the world's leading researcher, all I do is stay here and build robots. They're the ones exploring the world. I just write down the data, crunch numbers, generate graphs. Right, I've been seeing robots everywhere. I just thought it was because the world was too dangerous for most people to explore. That's not far from the truth, actually. But I know someone who still does his research firsthand. Oh? Even after segments of land started collapsing, and access to the more remote areas became difficult. I mean, he outright built a machine that could fly. It's the friend of the kids, the bird kids. Something we all thought was not physically possible. Oh, that's... I asked him about working with us, so he provides us with all sorts of insights from time to time. But for some reason, he really didn't want to build robots. Or more specifically, coding them. How come? Beats me. I mean, he's happy to work with robots. In fact, he even... Dot, dot, dot. 
<laughs> it's been a while since we last talked. He must be busy with his books now. Yeah. Don't overwork yourself, okay? Your journey is just as important as your end goal. Cliche, but true. They're like, yeah, don't rush to the ending. You have to go explore everything if you want to save this plant. Hey, Lauren. Doesn't the lady look kind of familiar to you? Yes. Yes, she absolutely does. I wonder if she's related to the robot lady who gave me the amber. Oh! So there's Silver and Dr. Silverpoint. Or whatever her name is. I almost want to ask her about it. Should I? Yeah, I think we should. I think we should. Hi, Phil. Welcome. Oh. Th that's... How did you get this? This robot lady in the Barrens gave it to me. She looked... Kind of like you. I see. <sighs> it was supposed to be such a breakthrough, you know? I even based her on myself, so I'll know it works. Breakthrough? We wanted to build a robot that acts like a person, thinks like a person. A robot that isn't bound by its own code. Oh! But turns out, you can't really build something like that. Too many contradictions in the code made her unstable. That was the only time I've ever seen a robot go rogue. Scariest day of my life, tell you what. Rogue? But she seemed so nice when we talked. Even if she talked a little weird. Ah, she's been repaired for some time now. My friend was able to stabilize her volatile state through his own means. A real miracle worker, that. After he was through, she ended up turning out just how I wanted. But the damage was already done. I gave up on her back then. We all did. I'm sure she realized that. And now she won't ever come back. She won't even answer my letters. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry for rambling. You should hold on to that amber, okay? I will. Huh. That's interesting. Now I'm curious about the relationship between the robot, her, and the scientist, not the scientist guy, the, the inventor, the author. Boop. We are waiting to be repaired. Boop. Do they all say that? This one is turned off. This one isn't active. Excuse me. This one isn't active. This one's going spinny. I cannot stop spinning. A robot. These robots are malfunctioning at a frightening rate. Physical damage from square particle anomalies is almost impossible to revert. No living person can touch them unless they have a death witch. But if we're lucky, sometimes the squares go away on their own but not before taking away one of the robot's arms or legs. Oh, that's what's happened to the big guys. Or head. Okay. Pico doesn't like that. I don't know if you've ever seen a headless robot before, but it is quite a sight to behold. And also quite dangerous. I wonder if I'm going to have to encounter one of those. Little well, robots. This is... It's a robot repair scientist. I'm not sure what's on your head. What is on your head? Is that rude? Am I allowed to ask that? This is so tedious. We miss the good old days before our robot repairing robots broke down. Now all the robots have to be assembled by actual people. But aren't you a robot? No? I mean, do I sound like a robot to you? Really? But your head is a TV. <laughs> Thank you, Nico. What does that have to do with anything? 
He was like, um, never mind. We should probably fix the robot repairing robots first. The higher ups need these guys done first for some reason. Oh my god. That is one nice thing about making your main character a child. They can ask all these questions that you have about the world. And it's okay because they don't know any better. They're a kiddo and an outsider, an outsider kiddo, which makes them extra extra able to ask the awkward questions. All right, so that's interesting. Is there anyone I haven't talked to here? I talked to all of you. I talked to Dr. Silverpoint, I think her name was. We did it all. Yay! Problem solved. Okay. Yeah, like, everybody is worried about death in this game. They're all worried that the light is going to go out and it's going to be really bad for everyone. Wait, wait, wait. Teleport. Travel. Shall we go to the library? Where they're once again talking about death. Yay! Wonderful. Good. Delightful. The best. Are you ready for library time? Ready to do this, folks? Oh, that would explain. The kids have the clover notebook because they're friends with the guy who has the flying machine. The guy with the flying machine is the same guy who plays chess with silver. And I guess probably gave a book to the lamplighter because that seems like something that he would do. is really good in this. The music doesn't draw attention to itself and in some ways it's really simple but it works very well. A pile of books on the ground. You're not gonna tell me what they are, Nico? No, I guess there's too many. Oh. Oh my god, there's library robots! Book bots! Book bot, book bot, book bot! Book bot, book bot, book bot! I'm so excited. Hello, person! Hi! Reshelving in progress. Please watch out for potential falling books. I will! Yep, still scared of ladders. <laughs> Be shelving in progress. I'm just excited about the book bots, okay? Books are neatly placed on the shelf. Because the book bots did it. Good job, book bots. It's just like the little one up there, like leaning over the side, and then this one down here is holding the ladder to keep it safe and secure. I don't know, it's just adorable. <laughs> some sort of plaque oh my god this person is too cool and they're reading a book with a clover on the cover are all books in this world written by the person who puts clovers on the cover a photo of some people dot 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 what I, I didn't say anything well stop staring at me then I was just looking at your book yes you are in a library there's books in the library um, go bug the chatty one upstairs. He just glared at me. I'm sorry, Nico. I don't think we should bother him, Lauren. Guess he's definitely got attitude. <gasps> There's a tiny person. Do you see 
see how small this person is? Oh my goodness. The author's books cover a wide range of topics. And it seems there are no subjects he does not write about. Quite the Renaissance man, don't you think? I guess so. But he's been focusing on documenting the world as of late. Oh? They say the city is the last bastion of civilization. Soon these books may be the only thing we have to remember the rest of the world by. Ah. Uh, I guess that's why the library is always so packed. And this is a slow day, mind you. Just piles of books, neatly stacked books. Just chairs that don't get commented on. Oh, hello. Do you need directions? Let's see. This area here is mostly historical accounts. The reference section is downstairs, and, uh, I'm not sure where the children's section is. Sorry. That's okay. I'm not really looking for books. Oh, are you here to look for the author, then? No. Oh, that's good. I, I mean, that means you won't be disappointed. I've been volunteering here for months, and I've never seen him. Not even once. He works together with the head librarian on publishing, so you'd think he would at least show up once in a while. But he doesn't? Yeah, he seems kind of reclusive. Which is weird for a guy who supposedly travels the world. Maybe it's just around people. Probably depends on the kind of people. I mean, I don't think many people have ever seen him in person. Or know what he looks like. Everyone's heard of him through second-hand second -hand accounts, though. Oh, but he did reply to my letter that one time. I got it framed immediately. Nice. Hopefully one day he'll show up. A computer. It's currently off. Alright, so the author is definitely significant in some capacity. I don't think that he'd be the one who's talking to me through the computer's offering hints. Because he sounds much nicer and friendlier than that. Hello, binocular face. That really is a little bit disorienting. The author is so cool. I heard he can travel all over the world with a flying machine. That's how he gathers material for his books. Wow! You know, I've tried looking for the flying machine with my binoculars for ages, but aren't they just your eyes? Why do you gotta call them your binoculars? Isn't that your whole face, man? Never saw such a thing, though. I'm... yeah. A photo of some plants. draw your attention to the librarian whose head is a book. <laughs> oh, man. Um, what are you doing to that book? Nico is really uncomfortable with whatever's happening. I can't tell through the pixelated graphics. Don't worry, these are my own books that I wrote. I just pulled them off the shelves to modify them. I have to cross out some sections. Most sections. Eh? How come? Because otherwise they'll think I copied him. Him? The author. I mean, I really don't see the point of writing anything anymore. The author's just going to write about the same thing and then everyone will love it. And nobody's going to remember the books that came out before his. Oh, uh, I mean, I ain't hating. I can see why people go nuts over his stuff. That guy's got major talent. But it just hurts, you know? It's never fun when people call you a copycat for something you wrote about first. Yeah, I was going to say, this is Undertale, isn't it? This is Undertale. Oh. Oh. 
So I'm going to read into this a little bit much and say that presumably the creator of this game had to cut entire sections from their game because otherwise they were going to be accused of copying Undertale, even though they had been working on their game before they played Undertale. That's a shame. I'd like to see their original concept, and I'm curious how much it would actually overlap with Undertale. One thing that I have noticed, the more that I've... A lot of it has to do with playing video games, but also sometimes reading books and stuff, too is that there seems to be almost a collective consciousness where things with similar questions that they're exploring, sometimes even in similar ways, will pop up around the same time. And it's not like the sort of thing where you have these summer blockbusters coming out, which they did for a long time in the 90s. You'd have two blockbusters with the same general theme. Like there was the summer that we got two meteor movies. And like the summer that we got two giant water creatures attack people movies and things like that. I think with Hollywood, there is actually an intentional overlap there. But in this case, it's more like, yeah, Bugs Life and Ants. That's another case. Um, in the case of something like this, it almost feels like there's, there's something that causes these to be the questions that some people are wrestling with. And they have similar tools that they use to wrestle with those questions. And I really wonder what that is. Like, I wonder if that's something that wouldn't have happened as much, obviously, in the past because we didn't have such, like, a globally connected world. But these days, you have, like, A, it's easier for people to make stuff and put their creative things into the world. But also, I think you have more people drawing inspiration from the same things and also being aware of what's happening in, a, in the world around them on a larger scale as well. And so I think my hypothesis based on nothing more than thinking way, way, way too hard about storytelling and creativity and what goes into it and human like psychology and creativity and all of these things and how they fit together, which is one of the great passions of my life. You've all heard me talk about this sort of thing for way too many hours. <laughs> my, my hypothesis that can't ever be tested, unless somebody science-y out there is doing this, but I doubt anyone is. My hypothesis is that it's simply that when you have the same inspirations and the same world situation affecting people and so many people in the world like you kind of can't help but have people be triggered by the same external forces and internal inspirations because they're marinating in the same world they're going to respond to the same conflicts the same fears the same concerns they're going to have variations based on their specific personal beliefs and fears and greatest inspirations but for example like we know there's a whole ton of mother likes essentially because there's like there's the mother direct which is full of mother likes and various things like that um and so people who grew up on the mother series a lot of them were kind of coming coming of age in a way at a similar time taking that as inspiration and other things and i would say that the never ending story in my guess is an inspiration for both this and certainly for deltarune if not for undertale um which makes sense because i would guess that night margin is probably around the same age i am maybe a little younger but the right age for the never ending story to have been a formative experience um in the Mother series, and I'll try to tiptoe around this carefully, but if you play the like, if you play the games and, and and get to the end, like like in the games, even if it's not, even if the meta like playing with the player isn't as explicit as it is in Undertale or in uh, One Shot, 
Um, it's still there, especially in Mother 3, but not just in Mother 3. There's elements, they ask you, what is your favorite food? Name the family members after your family so that you care about them. Um, things that pull you into the game and things that recognize you as sometimes as a presence outside of the game. And so those are formative experiences. Those are those are influences that are going into people or were going into people at a specific age. Um, you give them RPG Maker in a certain number of years to kind of play around with that. And it kind of stands to reason that you're going to get multiple people taking these inspirations. Now, this game came out which year? 2014? Undertale came out in 2015, right? But the, I guess the demo must have come out earlier and the Kickstarter must have been in 2014 as well, would be my guess. Because I'll bet... Okay, so there was a 2014 version and this is the 2016 version. Post Undertale, probably this book section will have been added because of that. Undertale demo was in 2013 and full was in 2015. So they're, they're basically working in parallel. I would bet that there is also something happening around 2011, 2012 in the world. There was something. Maybe... <sighs> when did Gone Home come out? I'm pretty sure Gone Home is earlier than this, but when did Gone when did Gone Home come out? Was that 2012 or was that like 2008? I'm going to need someone with Wikipedia because I don't have my phone. Okay, so Gone Home came out in 2013. When did Gamergate start? 2012? 2015? That late? No. No, it was earlier than that. Okay. Because I was not divorced yet when Gamergate was going on. So kind of what I'm getting at here regardless of so so the the climate that gave rise to gamergate was happening in the early 2010s and earlier there was a lot of conversation about who games were for and what games could be gone gone home came out and people criticized it so much for being a walking simulator nothing happens it's not a game there were these furious think pieces written about it, um, especially because it has queer themes in it. Um, and, and there's just a whole lot of pushback around that time of who could be in games, what games could be about, how games could be played, all of these things. These are conversations that were happening. I would say probably between 2008 and 2012. Yes, the sad puppies. The sad puppies, that was, I see I'm basing all of this on like conversations I remember having in which apartment I lived in at the time. So the sad puppies must have been in 2011, would be my guess. 2013 to 2017, really? I mean, I guess that makes sense. I think that I think I'm thinking of the right apartment. I think I moved into that apartment in 2012, so that would make sense. But so all of these things are kind of happening. And if you are a sensitive young gamer living in this world, seeing these conversations happen around you, when you felt like perhaps, perhaps you've been making other projects of some sort, whether because you've been writing stories or working on games or just dreaming about making games, you've had ideas and suddenly kind of the world is saying that your weird, queer, peaceful little self doesn't, does or doesn't belong in games. Whether you set out intentionally to contradict that, whether you create a game to be a middle finger in the face of Gamergate or not, that 
what is going to contribute to what you create and why you create it the way you create it because that's what you're saturated in without even looking at what's happening in the larger world at the time which is sort of mirrored by Gamergate kind of predated like that was like the precursor to the rise of the alt-right and all of that um so I would say that the reason why One Shot and Undertale have enough overlap that people might accuse Undertale of, or accuse One Shot of ripping off Undertale, they're, they're clearly, they're inspired by the same things and or they're inspired by things that are inspired by the same things. Like there's, there's overlap in their inspiration. I haven't played off. I've been told I probably shouldn't play off, I'm guessing. But, um, I will absolutely believe you folks. Is that the one about with the baseball player? I don't remember why I'm not supposed to play it, but I think that's the one with the baseball player. Okay. Not for Lawrence. Yeah. Um, but, uh, when did that one come out? Because if that's an inspiration for both of these games, like I said, I think the Never Ending Story is an inspiration for those creators. Again, I think that that comes through more in Delta Rune than Undertale, as far as I can tell. Um, 2008. Okay. All right. Uh, a noteworthy year for a number of reasons. I moved to uh, to Austin. There's Obama. <laughs> There's a lot of things. Um, no, I, I would say I would say that they're they're pulling from some similar inspirations both in and out of gaming. And they're reacting to the environment around them. I mean, they both got non-binary protagonists, like intentional use of they, them pronouns. Um, rising from the era in which Gamergate was happening and there was so much backlash against Gone Home, like... I'm sure that that was a factor, even if it wasn't a conscious inspiration. Yeah, the financial crisis in 2008. Yeah, it was sure it was an interesting time. It's funny to think, because I start thinking about 2016 as not being all that long ago. But you know, it's, it's getting on there now. Things that came out in 2014, 2013, we're looking at an entire decade ago. And there's been a lot of history that's crammed in there on the national and international stage and also within our gaming hobby um when was the death of the gamer article that came out that was not even about gamers dying it was just saying that gaming is so common and mainstream that there's no need for it to be declared as your hobby because it's the same as watching movies or watching television or reading books being a hobby which would have been wonderful if it was true and for a lot of people it is true but for the people who made that their identity <laughs> being a gamer, being a special persecuted minority of the gamer, um, having that taken away from them made them really upset and they were all really reactionary and it was a whole thing. Anyway, <laughs> you didn't come here to hear me talk about Gamergate, but I don't think it's a coincidence that these two games came out when they did, given what was going on in the gaming world at that time. And I bet if we looked at more things, we'd find more stuff that kind of lines up around there. And it may also be that, like, RPG Maker allowed them to do stuff that played around with... Well, because so the thing is, the never-ending story pulls you, the reader, and there's a character in the book who is reading the character in the book to him. And so you are a part of the never-ending story. That's why it's the never-ending story. Just as Bastion is reading Atreyu's adventures, we are reading Bastion's adventures. I really want to write my my book. Well, maybe someday I'll write something. Maybe someday I'll be a creator of these things instead of just somebody who reacts to other people's. But you know. Also, if you haven't watched The NeverEnding Story, I recommend the first movie a lot. Um, I think it's wonderful. The author didn't like it, but I think he kind of missed what made it good. Um, but they're both very good in very different ways. I think that the movie is a lot more approachable. And the book has a lot more content in it. <laughs> anyway, I recommend it. I should get back to I was trying to learn to read. I was reading it in German. I don't read. I don't speak German. So that was me in a dictionary. It was fun. Anyway, I should get back to one shot. But that was fun. Thanks for indulging me, folks. <laughs> I 
can see that. People call me a cat all the time. Here's Nico bringing a little bit of, a little bit of comic relief. Even though I'm a person and cats are pets and mousers. I sure hope people don't think I eat mice. <laughs> then I guess we're in the same boat, kiddo. So this person is. That is an interesting thing. Because it's very clearly, I think, very clearly. And I like the, the, like, that person is very talented, but I'm like, yes, Toby Fox is very good. It's hard to look at Undertale and say, it's hard to be the sort of person who would enjoy one shot and look at Undertale and be like, that doesn't deserve accolades. Like, no, it's, it's really good. You can absolutely see why people love it. In fact, you can see why people love it more than one shot. It's more polished. It, it has more going on. It's more ambitious. Um, which is not in any way to disparage one shot, but it's not a fair comparison. And I can see that. And I can see that being very frustrating as a person who made this smaller game. I'm curious about Night Margin's prior game creation experience because Because um, we know that Toby Fox made a number of games and hung around people who made games a lot. And I'm sure that shaped his game making and the skills and strengths. Sometimes people look at Undertale and they're like, his first game was the most successful thing ever. And it's like, uh, that wasn't his first thing, folks. But I do wonder, how much had Night Margin done before the creation of this game? That, that, is, the, that is the lead creator of this game, right? And was this primarily a one-person operation? How many people worked on one shot? A big book with a black clover on the cover. The title says, A Comprehensive Guide to Phosphors. Maybe the writer is creating the world and, and, and sharing this information so that the world can be created. Wait a minute, I can actually look at this book. I, I can look at this book. This isn't, this isn't Nico looking at the book and telling me what they see. This is me. This is me looking at it. I wonder what Nico's gonna have to say about that. Okay, I'm gonna read this to you. As a general rule, if a phosphor loses its glow entirely, it cannot be relit unless exposed to the sun. If the phosphor is merely dim, it may be possible to boost it through exposure to another phosphor of higher energy. But even so, the boosted phosphor will never return to its original brightness. Oh, hold on, we're gonna go all the way to the beginning. No, 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 no. Okay. Ah, I see. There's not a forward backwards. It's just moving to the next page. Chapter 5. A survey of phosphors found in the natural world. Blue phosphor. Location, the barrens. Out of the common phosphors, blue phosphor is of moderate levels of energy. It can exist in both organic and mineral forms. The mineral form is most commonly found in the metallic sand of the barrens. The organic form is most commonly found in phosphor shrimp and their secretions. Although the light emission of blue phosphor is powerful, it has what I would describe as self-conserving properties. That is to say, the glow may not be constant. Most forms of blue phosphor will stop glowing if left undisturbed for long periods of time. If using blue phosphor to power machines, a motor should be set at a baseline level of activity to ensure constant agitation of the phosphor. Alternatively, live phosphor shrimp can be used. That's why they use those in their lanterns. Green phosphor. Location, the glen. Out of the three common phosphors, green phosphor is of the highest energy. It is also the rarest of the common phosphors as it can only be found in organic form. Known sources include the sap of phosphor trees, which are not actually trees, we've been told they're actually more like, more like grass, fireflies, and various mosses. Although this phosphor is present in the ubiquitous ground-covering moss in the glen, it is only in minute amounts and almost impossible to concentrate. Green phosphor is ideal for industrial use. However, due to the, its relative scarcity and past over-harvesting, <laughs> thanks people, there is currently no reliable source. Thankfully, at least locals of the glen still have enough to get by. Red phosphor. Location, the refuge. 
out of the out of the common phosphors, red phosphor is at the lowest energy. It exists exclusively in mineral form and can give can only give light when in solution. The dilute red phosphor abundant in the city's water channels can be concentrated and induced with currents. This can create an artificial high energy state with greater luminosity. One major caveat is that the phosphor in this supersaturated solution will precipitate out rather quickly. As soon as the phosphor recrystallizes, it loses its glow permanently. If using supersaturated red phosphor as a power source, make sure there are proper facilities or services that can replace it frequently. Oh dear. Here is a kiddo with a coffee cup for a head. So what do you think about the author? I don't know. Have you read his stuff yet? If not, you should. There's a couple of his books in this room that aren't occupied yet. Hurry before someone takes them. That's the book club. The author's latest books are really something, yeah? The head librarian just released a bunch last week. Oh? They're big compendiums. You'll see them if you look around. Kind of different from his earlier works, though. I'm used to reading his travel logs and novels, mostly. Oh, and picture books, those too. I like pictures. Okay, so he used to write things for fun, but now he's just trying to document things before they all fall apart. I guess he's probably trying to save the world in his own way. The author publishes books at a highly accelerated, almost inhuman pace. In fact, he has put out more books in one year than most authors do in a lifetime. According to the head librarian, there is still a large amount of material he has written but not published. One cannot help but to wonder where he can get so much done in so little time. Presumably by closing the computer and changing time. I did the calculations and the numbers simply do not add up. Maybe he can stop time? No such mechanism exists in this world. Is that actually possible in your home dimension? I love how everyone can tell that Nico is the messiah because of the sun. <laughs> so they all know that they're from the uh, some other dimension. Now, I just saw in a movie once about superheroes and stuff. I haven't seen any superheroes in this world. Saw a lot of robots, though. Well, I guess robots are more plausible than superpowers. True. Let's see, how do I get to... Can I not get... Oh my gosh. You can't tell me I can't get to... Okay, I can. Thank you. It's a little plant. You're going through these pages pretty fast. Actually, it's mostly pictures. Oh? Yeah, the author doesn't only write books. He also illustrates them. Sometimes he makes books out of only pictures. Neat. I just like looking at pictures. Same. Oh, man. All right, now I have to figure out how I'm going to get... How do I get to... There's another... There we go. Okay. This dry erase board is made of metal. Huh. That's weird. A big book with a black clover on the cover. The title says, Emergence of New Ecological Niches in a Post-Sun World. Interesting. Phosphor shrimp. Also known as seed shrimp in certain vernaculars due to the shape of their transparent coat. These aquatic invertebrates are the most abundant life form in the oceans surrounding the barrens. Common firefly, a nocturnal beetle with a vibrant glow, sometimes captured in mass and put in jars to be used as living lamps by the glen's residents. This has inspired the now common practice of using phosphor shrimps to do the same. Well, that makes sense. Because they did the fireflies, now we use the shrimp that way. Ah, okay. Interesting. Hello, librarian book. Or, or librarian bot. Excuse me. Oh, you are the messiah. <gasps> the robot has a bow tie and glasses. This is a dashing robot. A dapper robot, if you will. Welcome. When I first entered the city, a big robot told me to look for a library on the surface. This is the same library, right? Affirmative. Oh, goody. Well, we're here. What do we do now? The big robot only said there'd be clues here. That is a question for the head librarian, George. Is he a fish? Is he a fish? 
allow me to call oh is she a fish allow me to call her oh, like literally call I should probably finish talking to everyone else first well I'll do that Nico's dot dot dotting and sweat dropping and annoyed. She is not picking up. Is she not here? She is here. She is in the archival room upstairs. When she is concentrating on her work, she will ignore any and all phone calls for several days. Yikes! <laughs> Can you go get her in person then? Leaving this post is not in my programming. But you clearly have personality, or are you dressed that way so the nerds don't feel bad? Then can I go for myself? Of course! The archival room is accessible through the stairwell behind me. Gotcha, thanks! Alright. I- There's like, bubbles. Why is there bubbles? Oh, is that a soda? I'm on my third cup. I can't feel my limbs. Oh. Uh... But I have to stay awake. I need to find out how this book ends. Curse the author and his beautiful cliffhangers. I love that the person starts talking in all caps. I have definitely... I read I read one book on Sunday and one book on Monday. I finished reading Legends and Lattes. Oh. Books are neatly placed on the shelf. Books are placed neatly on the shelf. Placed books are neatly on the shelf. So it's just like rearranging those words. That's delightful. Yeah, I read the entirety of some books this weekend. Oh, wait. Unauthorized entry. Library card required for further access. Wait, what? But you just said library card required for further access. I don't have a library card, though. Where can I get one? This is a question for the head librarian, George. Allow me to call her. She is not picking up. I figured. Are you sure you can't just let me through? Letting you through without a library card is against my programming. What? Even in an emergency? My programming is not flexible. I have not been tamed. <sighs> All right. Well. Coffee cups. Coffee's for grown-ups coffee machine. It's almost empty. On the shelf are neatly placed books. Neatly placed books are on the shelf. On the shelf neatly are placed books. Like, I'm just, I'm sorry, I just, I feel like this, I feel like this person's sense of humor and Toby Fox's sense of humor have some overlap. You know? So I'm pretty sure... Hey, can you get me an illicit library card? No, you're still talking about quick deaths. Cool. I'm pretty sure that I should teleport over to... Well, actually, you know what? I wonder if my friend here has... Oh. A library card I could borrow. Hey, you looking for something? Yeah, I need to go find a library card now. Any idea where I can get one? From the library? I tried that already. The person in charge wasn't there. Oh, uh, maybe check out the factory? You just take the stairs at the end of the street and make a turn. There's a lot of scientists there. Scientists read books, right? They might help you. <laughs> well, good luck. You too! With the lamp! Oh my god, they're such a cute, polite child. Okay, so clearly I did that out of order. Clearly. You're supposed to go to the library like they tell you to. 
and then you're like, what do I do? And maybe you're like, oh, that friend might know, and you go ask your friend. And then he tells you to come here. Yes, I am slightly contrary. Hello, scientist. I'm sorry you and your robot are having a bad day. Let's get a library card, shall we? Oh, hey, you're back. Can I help you with anything else? Yeah. Do you know how I can get a library card? A library card? You'll have to ask the library for that. I tried. I needed to see the head librarian, but I can't get to see her without a library card. But at the same time, she's the one who gives out library cards. Really? <laughs> that sounds like George, all right. I'm sorry you caught her on a bad day. Oh. Wait, I know. I can just give you my library card. It won't be hard for me to get another one. Are they girlfriends? Are they girlfriends? They might be girlfriends. They could be sisters, but they could be girlfriends. Wow, thanks! There, you're all set, I think. Wait. Shoot! I forgot. The front desk library bots have facial recognition. And my photo on the card won't match you. Unless I tape a photo of my face to your face. <laughs> what? Um, that was a joke. Because I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. It could have happened. Who knows, maybe you'll get lucky and the robot will take it anyway. Worst comes to worst, you can always find somewhere to take a photo. Do you folks want to see... Oh, wait, we, we can't do that from inside. We have to be outside to, to, to cannon travel. Do you want to see what happens if we do it wrong? Or do you want to try to do it right? Oh, it's getting close to time, isn't it? Next vote is to do it wrong. But that's the wrong one. All right. I have a lot of stuff, Kip. The name says Kip Silverpoint PhD. Okay. Exclamation point! Unauthorized entry! Library card required for further access! I know, I know. Authenticating barcode! Executing facial recognition! Photo match! Failed! It seems you do not resemble the owner of the card. You cannot use this card. Bummer. Alright, well, I guess we'll have to do this next time, because it is right around time for me to shut down. Now, it's clear that we have to take these lenses and figure out where they go to make a photo in the photo machine. Why did I remember the factory? Why? Why did I recognize that when I, like, haven't recognized, like, anything else? What is wrong with me? Past Lauren, what is the deal? 2017 Lauren, what is your deal? I solved a puzzle, true, but, like... Was I that excited about brute forcing it? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm going to shut this game down. I will be back. I will be back on Thursday for Disco Elysium. Maybe we'll get... Because the maybe... But this isn't a Talo style puzzle. This is... This is a logic puzzle. This is the kind of stuff that I actually have been doing my whole life that I love. So I don't know. It's a mystery. But anyway, if I do a music stream, even if it's just a practice flute a little bit, that might happen. So don't be surprised if anything like that pops up. Um... 
Yeah, okay, well, thank you all for being here and for indulging me in my random rambles about things. I hope that you all have better weeks than I've been having. I hope all is well. Take care of yourselves. Don't forget, the journey is as important as the destination, so take good care of yourself. Good night, everybody. Bye.